The word I'm going to share with you today is big in my heart. It's one that uh, you will, we're going to read a lot of scripture verses today, and you're going to know all these scripture verses that we read. They're going to be very familiar to you. But this word I'm going to share with you is how I have to live my life as a believer. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. And I'm going to teach you today, maybe in a different way with different wording than perhaps you're used to, about this force, this power, this energized spirit of life called faith. And I want to teach it to you because if the just, that's you and I, the righteous, are to live by faith, then uh, that means we're going to have a lot of challenges in life. Faith was intended by God for you and I to put our trust in his word, put our trust in who he is, and he then says, I will see you through your challenges into victory, into a place where you can begin to, to live out the promise and the will of God for your life. So many people know the word faith. They understand the concept of faith, but they don't know how to live it. If the just shall live by faith, we better know how to live it. Galatians chapter 5, verse 6 says this, for in Christ Jesus, uh, Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but faith works through love. Faith works through love. The Hawes New Testament translation says faith exerts its energy through love. Smith's literal translation says faith is energized by love. Love. Faith has an energy attached to it. What is faith? Faith is believing what God has said and it becoming the primary force in your life that determines all the decisions you make about the things that are happening in and around you. How many of you have some challenges in your life? Wow, you're doing pretty well. Doing pretty well. Some of you have challenges with not responding. Some of you have challenges with lying. We all have challenges. We do. Faith has an energy that's attached to it. It's a force, and it's something that you and I possess. Romans chapter 12, verse 3 in the New King James says that God has dealt to each one, each one, a measure of faith, an amount of faith. Uh, the, the translation of, of, of NET says this, God has distributed to each of you a measure of faith. We all have at our disposal this force, this, this energy, this power that is called faith that we are to use. God himself has it. And here's what he did with his. In Genesis 1, the Genesis account, he spoke the word into existence, didn't he? He spoke the word into existence. Then in Hebrews chapter 11, beginning at verse 1, Scripture says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen for. By it the elders obtained a good testimony. And then watch this. By faith we understand. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. The Genesis, Genesis account says God spoke a word and created the world. The Hebrew account says that by faith, God framed the world by speaking the word of God. So that's what he did with his faith. He created the world, and he framed it. Uh, if you dig into that phrase, frame, uh, you, you framed the world by the word of God, you'll see that it actually is talking about God put all the seasons of our lives and of the life of the world together. He, he, he made it all come together uh, by faith. He, he has, has framed my world. He, he's framing your world. So if, if God uses his faith on us to frame our world, to make sure everything goes together the way it's supposed to be, 
then we ought to be in agreement with that, shouldn't we? So that what he's in faith for will come to pass. How many of you know when we don't believe what he is framing or what he is creating in our lives, what he desires may not come to pass? Because it's going to take our cooperation. Now look at the rest of, of, of verse 3 here. The first part is God's place in terms of faith. The second part is ours. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. That's, that's describing what faith is. Verse 1 describes what faith is. So God uses his faith to create the world and to frame it. We are to use our faith to bring what he has created, what he has framed into reality, the reality of where we live, a spiritual substance becoming flesh. The just shall live by faith. I, I can never get away from that. Every day when I wake up, I know this, that I am to live by faith that day. I'll have challenges. I'll have many challenges, but I am to live by faith that day, trusting God, trusting in his word. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say some things that you're going to say, huh, about here in just a moment, but I want you to get the picture that faith is a force. It has an energy to it. There's power in it, and each one of us possess it. And if you can understand that, then you can now begin to function in this power, this force, this energized life filled truth. So let's, let's look at 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. It says this, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that overcomes everything that goes on in the world. This is the victory that overcomes the world. Even whose faith? Now, God has faith, doesn't he? And he used it. He uses it. But we have a responsibility with faith, and that is to overcome the challenges that are presented to us in our world. And our victory in those challenges is found in that phrase, our faith. Listen, there are no free rides for the just who live by faith. Oh, let me say that forcefully again. There are no free rides for the just who shall live by faith. We have a responsibility. So if faith is, is so powerful that it's so forceful, it has the energy and life and power of God in it, we'd better learn how to use it. Right? Now, first things first. If you have an issue with the faith movement or faith teaching, get over it. You should be over it by now. Okay, get over it. I'm not teaching about movements today. I'm teaching the Bible, and I'm going to show you the Bible, okay? So let me tell you, because I have to live this way. I'm responsible for my family and, and my own life, for my children and my grandchildren. I'm talking about spiritually. I don't pay their bills. I, I'm, I'm responsible for, for what God has called me to do. I, I'm responsible for you. I, I have to f exercise my faith. I mean, Sharon Blackburn, she's standing right here. How are you doing, Sharon? Awesome and healed. She, she called us last night, and she was just in so much pain and just unbearable pain and um, asked us to pray. And Joyce and I, together, we, we got an agreement. And so uh, how many of you know, I'm, I'm going to tell you right in just a moment, there are many voices in the world, but I got to stay in faith. I got I to gotta hear the right voice. And uh, so I began to pray for her, and I said, Sharon, I'm going to declare over you what the Bible says, and we declared over her that that pain must go. It must go. And so um, she texted Joyce a little bit later and said, it's gone. It's gone. We, we have to stay in faith because the just live that way. 
That's how we are to live. We got to be instant, in season, and out. So here's, here's what faith is to me, okay? I'm, I'm teaching you my experience, but I'm pulling from the resources of the Bible. Faith to me is the process of getting my outer world. We all have an outer world. Faith to me is the process of getting my outer world in agreement with my inner world. It's, it's the process of getting my flesh in agreement with my spirit. I don't want to be led by my flesh. I know what my flesh likes, and it's not good. I know what your flesh likes, and it's not good. We got to be led by the Spirit of the Lord dwelling within our spirits. So faith to me is a process of, of getting my outer world to uh, <clears throat> conform to my inner world, to get my circumstances in life, and I have many, to match up with what I believe, God's Word. So then faith begins, number one, with God's Word. I'm going to share two truths with you, and under those truths, I'm going to show you the process of how the just shall live by faith, but the first one is simply God's word. Listen, everybody is speaking. Everything is speaking. There are many voices in the world. There are many voices in your outer world. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 10 says this. Now, if Timothy... Come, see that he may be with you without fear. For he works the work of the Lord as I also do. Okay, that's 1 Corinthians 16.10. I need 14.10. Here we go. There are many different languages in the world. And every language has meaning. That's supposed to be in the King James Version because um, it, it's, that word language is actually means voices. There are many voices in the world, many voices in the world. How many of you know your body speaks to you? Your body speaks. Your emotions speak. Your finances speak. Your, your depression will speak. Your fear will speak. There are many voices of all kinds who are always speaking, which is why you need a word from the Lord to establish what you believe in your inner world because your outer world is going to chirp all day long. So that's what it does. There are many voices that are speaking, and if you have not established the word of the Lord, the word of God in your inner world, then your outer world's going to be in control. And when it comes time to exercise faith out of your inner world, your outer world's going to speak louder. And now you're in trouble. Now you're calling me. And we're going to try and figure it out and get you up to speed. Romans 10, verse 17, talking about God's word, says this. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The force of faith, the power of faith, the God energy of faith, the life of God that's in faith comes to us and can increase as a result of how much word comes to you. You got to get some word. You've got to get more word. You got to get a word. If you don't have a word in you, then you're not established in your inner world. And your outer world is going to control you. And once you have it, then you have to begin to do something with it. Once you get your word, you got to do something with it. Do what God did with his. How many of you know that'd be a pretty good example to follow? Well, what God do with his word, he spoke it, and all of creation came into being. 
What did God do with his word? He framed what he had created. He put it all together. How did that all come to, pa to pass? By speaking. The, the Romans 10, 17 word, word, is the Greek word, rhematos, which means an utterance or a spoken word with all the voices that you and I have to contend with. You'd better create the voice that speaks what God is speaking in your inner world. And, and why speak it? it? It's because you believe it. It's that, that word's in your inner world. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13 says this. I told you we're going to read all the scriptures you already know. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe. What do you believe? Oh, I, I believe the word that God has spoken. I believe, and because I believe, I speak what I believe, the word God has spoken. We also believe, and therefore speaking of the problem we have with like the movement of faith was because a whole lot of people were speaking a word they didn't have. It's like the guy who came into church and I'm preaching and he sat in the back, this was years and years and years ago, and he said to his friend, see that girl on the front row? He's talking about Joyce. He says, yeah, God just told me she's going to be my wife. <laughs> well, how I many of you know, he didn't have a word from the Lord. <laughs> I already got that word. <laughs> One of the big problems that we often have is we... we, we are, are getting what we believe from our outer world. And, and we've, we, that's going to shipwreck you. You've got to get a word from your inner world. And, and when you get it, then you speak it. When you start speaking stuff that doesn't come from God, you're going to get in trouble and you're going to get a lot of other people in trouble. <clears throat> Next. That's the establishment of the word of God, talking about faith. Now I'm going to show you what the pro process is. The next thing is this. Number two, the voice of the inner world. The voice of the inner world. Now, I'm going to describe to you how faith works, how I exercise the faith I have, because I have, I have a force in me. I have a power in me. I have a, a, a force that moves mountains. I have this, this energized life of God that has been given to me, and so do you. But you have to use it. It has to become a part of your inner world because your outer world is chirping and will take you away from what's on the inside of you. Now, I'm gonna describe to you how faith works, how your inner world is energized, how your faith comes alive. <clears throat> James chapter 2, verse 17. Faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. So God has put his life, his energy, his forceful power into his word, so why should we kill it, right? I mean, why, why would we kill it? So here's how faith works in my inner world, in, 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 in my life. A. You can write this down now, A, or write it down later on. Go back on our YouTube channel. A, you need to receive a Holy Spirit word. In John chapter 7, verse 37 through 39, the Bible says, on the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, let anyone who is thirsty, somebody has a need, somebody has a challenge, let anyone who is thirsty come to me, who is Jesus, he's the word made flesh, John 1, 14. Come to me and drink. Come get your word. Come get your word. Verse uh, 38. Whoever believes in me, now, now you can see faith working here. Faith, faith is believing the word of the Lord. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water, a force, an energized force field, a power will start to flow from within your inner world. 
Whoever believes in the word that has been given to them, rivers of living water are going to start churning. And I'll, I'll tell you, this is probably one of the, my favorite parts of the journey of faith. It's when I first get a word from the Lord by spending time with the Holy Spirit. I mean, I, I, got, a, I got a word f- from the Lord for this campus. And, and I'll, I'll tell you, the, the most fun part about the whole journey was getting the f- word of the Lord from the Holy Spirit. Because once I got the word and it got settled in me, then the challenges started. Then all hell broke loose. But the fun part was the first part. <laughs> Woo, I got a word from the Lord. And when you get that, it just starts building in you. Rivers start flowing. Ah, oh, the living water starts moving from, from within you, your, your inner world. Verse 39 says, by this, he meant the spirit whom those who believed in him were later to receive up to that time. The spirit had not been given since Jesus had not been glorified. Jesus needed to leave the earth. The Holy Spirit came. The comforter came, John 14, 15, and 16. And, and now we have this, this relationship with our life coach, who is the Holy Spirit. He will give us a word from the Lord, but you got to spend time with the Holy Spirit. You got to spend time with him. Believe that word, and it'll come alive in your inner world. Rivers of li- living water will begin to flow. Uh, this is an exciting time, and it's, you now have hope because you have an inspired word. I mean, just you know, a few weeks ago when I had to take a quick little trip to the hospital and had some little uh, challenges and things, uh, you know, concerning my heart, and um, which turned out to be nothing. But um, you know, as soon as we got in the car to head to the, the hospital, how do you know? Um, all those voices that are in the world start start talking. They start speaking. And so I, I needed a fresh word from the Lord. And you know, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. Once Joyce and I sat down and got our place uh, in at Loma Linda University Hospital and sat there with, seemed like every sick person in the entire world. <clears throat> we sat there and all, all of a sudden, I heard the voice of the Holy Spirit because I have a relationship with him, and, and I got a fresh word. If I wanted you dead, I'd have let you die May 22nd of 1922. But I didn't want you dead, and this is not going to kill you. So guess what happened? My countenance changed. Water started churning inside of me, rushing and flowing and washing over me. Now, I don't know why it took seven hours for the doctors to figure that flow of water out, but, but I received a fresh word from the Holy Spirit. It was an inspired word. This comes, verse 39, through the Holy Spirit. So, again, I'm, I'm showing you the process of faith. You need an inspired word from the Holy Spirit. And to get an inspired word from the Holy Spirit, you need to spend time with the Holy Spirit. Once you receive your inspired word, then you got to be, let it become personal. Let it become personal, that inspired word. Matthew 9, verses 6 and 7. A uh, quick story, I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on the earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralyzed man who had a challenge, he had a problem. His, his outer voices are screaming. You're paralyzed. You're, you can't walk. So guess who he's come in contact with? The, the unparalyzer, the healer, Jesus, standing right in front of him. And you would figure by osmosis he would be completely and entirely healed, but no, The unparalyzer said, get up, you do something. Take your mat and go home. In other words, you you need to let 
who I am become personal to you. This is not just some generality. God is good. God is healer. No, God is good to you, and he is your healer. You have to let it become personal. That part of the journey of faith has to be personal. It's got to become real to you, which leads me to the third part of this, and that is we've got to let the word become present tense. The word in our inner world is present tense only. Do you have a challenge? You need a word from the Holy Spirit. Let it become personal and know this. It must be present tense to be faith. It must be present tense. God's a spirit. In the area of spiritual, in, in, in the spirit realm of our lives, the inner world, there is no time. Time is for the outer world. There's no time in the inner world. The Bible says in describing God, it, it said, he says, I am that I am. There's nothing attached to that that has anything to do with the outer world. That's all inner world stuff. That's not I was. It's not I will be. Because if you have a fresh word from the Holy Spirit about your challenge and you start thinking of it in terms of outer world experience, when's this going to happen? I hope this happens, but so-and-so loved God and it didn't happen for them. And you're, you're in an outer world now. You got an inner world word and you've now put that inner word, world word into the outer world. Yeah. Time is irrelevant in the inner world. It's only relevant in the outer. Actually, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 says this. Now faith is. Not tomorrow or yesterday. Now faith is. And then it tells us what faith is now. It's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And, and that is a challenge for us because we live in an outer world where we need to see, we need to feel, we need to touch. Oh, you doubting Thomas. Faith is now. It's an inner world reality. D, we're talking about the process of faith. I'm telling you how I have to live this. D, you got to see the word. You got to see the word. Paul said in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18 to the believers, and I pray that the eyes of your heart, the very center and core of your inner world, your being, may be enlightened, flooded with light by the Holy Spirit who gave you the original word so that you will know and cherish the hope, the divine guarantee the confident expectation to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints of God's people. You've, you have an assignment from God and, and, and every bit of hell has come up against it. You need to have your eyes enlightened. Get, get an eye check. Because you need to see what God sees. You need to see the word. I love the story. I've told it before, the dedication of, of uh, Disney World in Florida. Uh, on, on opening day, they had all these dignitaries there, and uh, they, they got up, each one to speak, and one of the, the, the people who got up to speak looked at Disney World before him, and he said to the crowd that had gathered, oh, if Walt were only here to see this, because he had passed away. He had died before the completion 
of Disney World. And when Walt Disney's wife got up to speak, she says, oh, he saw it. That's why it's here. You got to see the word. You got to see it. How did Jesus teach? He taught in parables, word pictures. He wanted people to see truth. And so he told them stories that would help them see the, the truth that could make their inner world the champion, the director, the leader, the guider of their life. Well, we got to quit listening to the outer world voices that tell you it can't be done, it won't be done. You got to quit listening to the outer word voices that tell you you don't have the ability. You, this is for someone else smarter than you. Well, better known than you, someone who has, has better connections. Stop the madness of those voices in your life. See the word that you've been given by the Holy Spirit. See it and act upon it. And then finally, in the process of faith, for me, it's, you have to rest. E, you have to rest in the word that you've received from the Holy Spirit. Hebrews chapter four, verse three says this, for only we who believe, as someone who's, who's grabbed hold of a Holy Spirit inspired word, they, they put it in their inner world as, as the, the foundation. Only we who believe can enter his rest. For the others, God said in my anger, I took an oath, I'm not gonna, they will never enter my place of rest even though this rest has been ready since he made the world. God prepared for you to enter into the rest of what word he has given you. In other words, stop striving. Stop trying to make it happen on your own. Stay within the inner world. Don't, don't venture out into the outer world. Stay in faith is what it's saying. Because if you don't, then you fall under the category of the anger of God and you're never going to enter into a place of rest with the word that's been given you, even though the rest was made and prepared for you to enter into even before the word was given you. What's your challenge? What's your fear? What's your paralysis? You have the answer in your inner world. And that's where we got to live. Now, that to me is the concept of faith that I have to live by. Every, I get to live by it every single day. What, what is it in your life and in your challenges that keeps you from, from enter, gaining the promise? Hebrews 6 12 says that we inherit the promise of God through faith and, and patience. We're not teaching on patience today. We inherit the promise of God through faith, faith. So since you're the just, you'd better figure this thing out and you better start walking and living in it because challenges have come, challenges are coming. I mean, this year we're gonna see, I think the reason I have such great expectation in my life more so than ever before, not only for the church, the body of Christ, but but in, in our world, I think the reason I have such great expectation is because I sense there's going to be such uh, uh, greater darkness and evil than ever before. But guess what? We are people of faith. We get to rise up. Amen. We do. We, we, we get to e express the energy of God, the life of God, the power of God. We get to express it through our faith. Yeah. So you have some. You've been given some by God himself. It is energized by his ability, his life. Use it. Use it. Use it. Identify your challenge, and then I've given you a, a, a good pathway. Take it and start to use it. Can somebody encourage me and say amen. amen. Can somebody say, I'm the just. I will live by faith. Say, I'm the just. I will live by faith. Let's stand together. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for the opportunity to be given today for many to have a reminder. For many 
to hear for the first time how we are to live. Lord, we recognize the challenges we're faced in this season of world history that you knew was coming. You, you framed everything out after you created it. You, you knew we would be here at this moment. And, and as you look around the world, may it be said of us, you found faith. You found faith in a people. You found faith in a person. You found faith in a family. You found faith in people who will believe and trust in the word that you have given us by the Holy Spirit. You, you found faith in a people who are not afraid to speak and declare the word of the Lord given by you. You found faith as you view the entirety of this world and, and put your eyes upon us. You found a people who will believe you and trust you and walk this thing out with you. Lord, we don't know what's going to happen in the outer world between now and the election. There are a lot of doom and gloom that is being spoken. There are a lot of voices. There is a lot of potential for a lot of dark things to take place. But Lord, we are children of the light. We have been given the power of faith. And many have, have walked away from your precepts. But today we walk back and we say, I'm just, I will live this way. Thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's pray together. Before we do, I'm gonna ask you a question. If you've never made Jesus Christ Lord and Savior, are you willing today to take a step toward God and say, I need you. I need, I need your help. I'm in trouble. I'm spiritually in trouble. I, I can't make it on my own. I've tried. My outer world is kicking my inner world's butt. I need help. Guess what? You're in the right place. Today is your day of salvation. God sent his one and only son, Jesus, to die a cruel death on the cross. And in that, provided a way for you to begin to live, not out of your flesh, but out of your spirit, your inner man, your inner world. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ provided for you life everlasting, life eternal. Your sins are forgiven. His lordship is given to you. And the Bible says, and salvation is a step of faith, that if you will confess with your mouth, speak, remata, if you will speak, the word that has gone off inside of you that says you need a relationship with God through his son, Jesus. If you will declare that with your mouth, speak it. The Bible says you shall be saved. Oh, today, will you receive the word, declare it, speak it, receive it. If you're here, if you're watching our online church and you've never made Jesus Christ Lord and Savior, or if you're here, if you're watching and you served the Lord in the past, you're not serving him today, you need to get right with God and you know it. If this describes your life and you want me to pray with you, quickly lift your hand, hold it up high so I can see it. Quickly, hold it up high, wave it at me. Keep waving until I see it. I'll, I'll acknowledge Who's here? I need Jesus. Who's at home? I need Christ, Savior and Lord. Wave it at me. Anyone, anyone at all. All right, let's pray this prayer together. Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me, forgiving me, being the Lord of my life. I believe 
You are the Son of God. You died on the cross, rose again, and today come to live in my life as Lord and Savior. From this day on, I will serve you all the days of my life. In Christ Jesus' name I pray, amen.